And then there's a pie store. I haven't really checked out the pie store, uh, so I can't really tell you too much about that. And then as far as like browsing the internet is concerned, well, first of all, uh, one more thing for the internet. There's also like kind of like your notepad. It's called like Leafpad or something like that. Let's see if I can find. It's probably an accessories. Yeah. So this is like your notepad basically, where you can. Oops, I'm typing on the wrong keyboard. Where you can type, you know, whatever kind of stuff uh, you want. It's got a nice, pretty font. Um, and then as far as the internet is concerned, there's this browser here. I'm not sure what it is. It just calls itself web browser. There's also some other browsers that you can find in here. And uh, like Dillo, so you can screw up and call it Dildo every now and then. And uh, the best one, I, I, in my opinion, of course Midori will give you private browsing just in case you want to watch porn on your uh, Raspberry Pi. Or you can use NetSurf. NetSurf is pretty fast, but it was like it's a really basic um, uh, web browser. Like it was really hard for me. Like I couldn't figure out how to actually make something download. Like I would click on a download link and nothing would happen. So I think like NetSurf is just like really really basic, I guess. And then I don't know this other browser was actually it would actually download with the other browser. So it depends on what you want to do, I guess. But honestly, it. You, you can if you buy your Raspberry Pi to like view the internet, shame on you. So we're not really going to talk about that too much. Uh, if you want like a cheap computer to like play online and type and stuff, just get a netbook. Because uh, by the time you're done getting like a screen, a keyboard, and, and a mouse, and speeding up your Raspberry Pi, like buy one of these little Acer One netbooks. They're awesome. So anyway, that's not what we're doing here. But I will be at least talking about overclocking this thing and a bunch of other stuff in the future tutorials. Now, the next thing that I just want to teach you guys real quick is how to shut down your Raspberry Pi. Because if you don't know how to shut down your Raspberry Pi, chances are you might you might think about, hmm, I'll just pull the plug. Don't do it, because um, every single time my Raspberry Pi plug has been pulled or the power has been cut off for whatever reason, the SD card has been corrupted. So every time, you're not saving yourself any time by doing that, <laughs> at least in my experience. So um, the way to shut down, let's see if the start button no, doesn't. I was curious. Anyway, the way to shut down is just pull up your uh, your terminal here, and what you're going to want to type is sudo shutdown dash h and now, and that's going to shut down your Raspberry Pi. So you'll go ahead and do that. And in a moment, it will totally shut itself off. And as you can see, we have absolutely no signal. So let's say you're at this point, and you're like, okay, well, how do I turn Raspberry Pi right back on? Well, let's do that. Push it down here. And you can see, you can see it's powered, but there's no other lights going. And uh, I think I mentioned it in another video, but I'm refilming this one, so I'm just going to re-mention it again. But like on a computer like a start button you can never wire a computer to always be on it has to have a start button where when you push it it launches or it sends the signal once because you can't send a constant signal if, you, if you're not familiar with electricity you can think of it like with your car right you hit you start your car until it starts but you want to keep holding the starter right it's really bad for your car and your battery but anyway, so to get this to restart, you'll just unplug the power and replug the power back in. And you should see um, a green light flash just momentarily. And that's it sending, yeah, it went there. It's, uh, that's it just sending the signal momentarily, like a start switch might do. So anyway, um, it's plugged in. It's powering up at the moment. Pretty soon we'll see some stuff popping up on the monitor here. And sure enough, here we go. It's gonna launch some stuff. If you wanted to go back to that old screen, you would you would have held shift. We didn't really do that, um, so I think it'll launch us straight to our BIOS because I don't. We didn't choose to go to the desktop, so we'll wait as it's starting up here. I know it seems like it's a while, but you ever remember like the old days on your old computer? How long it would take to start your other computer? Like back in like 2005. I mean, this is faster than my 2005 computer. It's got more RAM too. Anyway, well not 2005, I guess probably like 2003. Anyway, Raspberry Pi login, we already kind of talked about this. It's Pi, password is Raspberry, oh, I think I typoed it, damn. Hold on, let's delete, delete, delete. Rasp, 
very, it's not going to show up. If you've ever done like passwords in any sort of command line, they don't show up usually. Anyway, hit enter, and that should get you uh, all set up. And now we're back at that um, command line here. And the way to get started, or bash, I guess it would be bash here, um, is again start x. And that'll send you back to your desktop, or you can just do everything in the command line. And the next awesome thing that I'll probably be showing you guys is how to use SSH and get your um, get your Raspberry Pi totally headless because you really don't need a monitor um, for really anything except for making the setup process easier. But once you've done that, everything you do in your Raspberry Pi can really be done via the uh, terminal. Or you could install like a screen sharing application. There's a few of those, so I'll be showing you guys some of those. Um, in some other videos as well. But for now, that's going to conclude this video. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.